I like to think I had a lot of speed, but you know, I was definitely more of a power back. You're going to Saturday school because we're gonna get this done and he get up and he do it. Now I'm gonna go off to college when I got the opportunity to go 10 minutes away and have my dad go to every game. We get to camp and he's balling. I did develop a relationship with Ted Monacino. That's when the magic start to happen. We rolling, we rolling. Big hole up the middle, look out, Terrell Sutton. Once he came and he practiced for us, I said, whoa, he's special. This guy was built for football. I mean, all it took was one practice to realize, like, this dude's elite. After just one year, the former Chandler Hamilton High star is proving to be a leader on defense. The thing I love about Terrell is he has fun in practice. Uh, practice isn't hard for him. You're just trying to get to know all of the guys and get to know their backgrounds. The previous staff had put together an amazing group of guys. and So I had, I had big where I needed big. We had fast where we needed fast. We pretty much talked about his expectations of me. They were bigger than what I expected for myself. So, and I was just like, okay, let me pour this glass out so he can pour, he can fill it up. I was never afraid to listen to him because I knew that as I listened to him, uh, I would be able to add some things to my toolbox, just like we were trying to add some things to his. He wanted me to be an every down player. Hey, we're not just trying to, to develop a one trick pony pass rusher. We're trying to develop one of the greatest players in the history of our game. He was clear cut on the vision, you know, he had for us in 02. So he was like, next year, we're gonna be first team, both Pac-10 and first team All-American. And he was like, you're also gonna be player of the year in, in the Pac-10. It was right after spring ball. I kind of got uh, called out by the strength coach, Joe Kent, we call him Coach House. He did what we asked the first year, but once once the summer came going into that, that year, you know, I think he probably spent the whole summer playing basketball at Escalante Community Center rather than train. For us to do what we need to do, we need our best guys here in the summer. And I really didn't have excuse because I lived here in the summer. For 12 weeks, no one had a better 12-week summer program than Terrell Suggs. He did all the conditioning with the running backs and he won every conditioning board. Never walked in practice. In fact, had the most energy in practice out of anybody. I mean, the guy would even be on the scout team kick return just to return kicks. He didn't dominate in the weight room and House convinced him to spend more time in the weight room that off season and he did. Terrell has a ton of respect for, for Joe and because Joe helped Terrell become T-Sizzle. And guess who's there? Terrell Suggs, T-Sizzle, knocks the ball out. Terrell, you know, he's a big kid, but T. Sizzle, when I, when I was on the field, was all about business. Kind of like a, a step into the phone booth type thing. I remember when he won some awards at our awards banquet at, banquet at the end of the year. I had everybody at the banquet just start to sizzle with their tongues. Uh, it became a little bit of an alter ego, but um, I know that that's a big part of who he is. And, and people love T. Sizzle and they love Terrell, too. You start to watch film and there's one guy that starts to stand out. He was your game plan. You focused your game plan on him. If you're running the football, you need to run away from him. His knack for timing the count. I mean, he, it's almost as if he knew the snap count every time. He started that trend, I, I think, of like, we have to do something here. We can't leave our guys one-on-one. -on -one. I felt like he was a guy that they just let stand up and go to the opposite side, opposite side of the field to work against a different tackle if he wanted to. He didn't have to watch hours and hours and hours of tape to find the weaknesses in a player. The one game I remember specifically that year was the home game against Washington. The one that stands out by far the most to me is uh, when we were playing Washington. Terrell Suggs was T-sizzle and then some. Do what you prepared to do, and there's nobody here that can block you tonight. And he was like, if you don't dominate this game, we won't win. And I said, Enough said, coach. 
He had four and a half sacks in that game and was just uh, a beast. That was my junior year and had a, I had a pretty good junior year. And he's laying on me one time and he says, CP3, you better go to the league, man. These boys are going to get you killed. His ability to use his hands to shed blockers and get to the quarterback in a foul mood, that was his, his gift. I don't think I really realized that he was breaking a national record or anything like that. And was also not planning on him sacking me four and a half times. So maybe we helped the cause a little bit. It was held by Dwight Freeney. They started counting it as an official stat the year before. Dwight Freeney called me. And he was like, you're certified first round. And I was like, what? You know what I mean? I'm like, you talking about the league? Yeah, this is a pretty good season. It's a pretty cool feeling. You know what I'm saying? See how far I can go. Territorial Cup week, we edgy. It's like, it's your, it's your rival. I went one and three when I was at Arizona against Arizona State. And um, I think we might have finished with some better records still at the end of the year, but that's my point. Like, it doesn't matter what, how good you were prior to this game. All that matters is how you perform in this one. I think the best rivalry game I've ever been a part of is the Pittsburgh Steelers-Baltimore Ravens rivalry. Uh, that one, that Territorial Cup game, is the nastiest one I've ever been involved in. For the game, Coach Monty King's like, go wreck it. Go wreck the game. Uh, I'm not going to get tired this game. Being tired isn't an option. I'm personally going to affect every play. You know, I sat in many draft meetings over the years in the NFL. They'd always say, hey, so-and-so had, had a great season. They had 10 sacks this year, or they had 11 sacks this year. And under my breath, I always chuckled at that. I said, no, a great season is 24 sacks. You look at the defensive ends in the first round, you probably could combine all of their sacks and they would equal it up to what Terrell had in his junior year. No player had a season as dominant as Terrell Suggs in 2002 when he set the NCAA single season record with his 24 sacks. And, ju and just say that term again, 24 sacks in one season. There wasn't a conversation you couldn't have about, you know, the best college football player, you know, was T. Suggs was definitely in that conversation. They have a legitimate claim, but it wasn't a stat until like two years before they, I broke the record. Certainly there were some great pass rushers before sacks became a statistic. Terrell would stack up against any of them in any era. That's tough. It is on record that Derek Thomas had that many sacks. It just wasn't kept officially. I think those guys are all held to the same standard. Like just absolute savages. Like if I told somebody jump as far as you can, they're going to jump as far as they can. All right, but if I tell somebody, hey, just so you know, no one's ever jumped this far before, and I and I, you can see it now. Well, now everyone's aiming for that. Well, SEC fans will say Derek Thomas, U of A fans will say Teddy Bruschi. It is what it is. You know what I mean? Terrell basically won every award a college football player can win, except for the Heisman that year. I mean, it was crazy. Coach House and Coach Monacino, they knew. You do this, you handle your business here, you're gonna win all these awards, you're gonna sweep them. And I think I, I won like three or four. I remember we were going to the big ESPN awards thing in Orlando. Terrell called me about an hour before the banquet and needed me to come to his room to help him tie his tie. <laughs> so uh, he's come a long way to say the least. It was good at the end for he and I to sit back and just smile at one another and not say much because because we were able to get some things done together and I, we're both very proud of them. And, um, I will tell you that it has an awful lot more to do with Terrell Suggs than it does with Ted Monachino. That's a fact. You don't want to lose your last game. And we lost our last game in the Holiday Bowl. And um, my big decision was on Sean McDonald. Nobody knows this. Nobody knows this, right? So me and Sean, we did a lot of talking. You know, he had a great year too. We definitely lived a very parallel life, maybe a little different levels because I definitely wasn't on Terrell's level. And I was like, Sean, if me and you both come back, we probably got a shot at the Rose Bowl. You want 
you know, kind of like football immortality. You want a, a championship team. You want to continue building it. You don't want to leave them high and dry. You know, especially with two of us leaving at the same time, that was gonna, gonna hurt the program. He was like, I don't know if I could do what I did this year, if I could do it again next year, you know, that hurt his draft status. And like, I, I totally get that. Terrell 100% had no decision, he, he had to leave. And there was no way in the world I, I'm, I would have been able to get 24 sacks again. If a guy was gonna get drafted in the first or second round, he should come out. And uh, you know, things have changed a lot, the money's different, but uh, you know, there was no NIL deals or anything like that. So, uh, you know, Terrell definitely needed to come out. That was the, that was the right move. We kind of decided as a family, uh, the night before that we were going to enter into the draft. I cried like a baby because it was like we were leaving the job undone. Terrell was a kid. I mean, he was, he was, a, he was a young guy and, you know, he, he loved playing ball. He loved his teammates at ASU. So, of course, that was, that was hard and the unknown of going to the, going to the NFL, but it was, it was definitely the right choice. The draft prep was definitely nerve wracking. You know, we made the decision of not letting me train here, making me train in LA, just kind of like get me away. I was unaware of how homesick like you could get. My workouts didn't go as well as I planned. One of the main measuring sticks of any workout is the 40 yard dash time. Suggs clocked in at 4.81 and 4.78 in two attempts slower than he expected. You know, they was like, oh, you got to put on weight where the weight I had was fine. The Ravens had sent their entire defensive staff to Pro Day. I remember distinctly talking to Jack Del Rio and saying, trust me, forget how much I got ways right now. This guy is a baller. As I talked to those NFL guys, it was, you know, yeah, but he runs this and he's not real strong. And, and I'm like, you're going to have to play against him for the next 15 years. Do you want to play against him or do you, or do you want him on your team? You, you notice he was cheating back out of that stance. We would do our readings, talking about different players. And I remember we got to Terrell, and uh, scouts were going through it, and Ozzy going, well, there's no way he's going to be there at 10. So, all right, let's 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 finish this off. But, you know, we're kind of wasting our time. We did a commercial um, with Suggs. I said, wouldn't it be funny if you fail to us to come to Baltimore? He was like, nah, I'll be gone before then. There was a little bit of a buzz because his 40 time wasn't real good when he tested, which I guess dropped his stock a little bit. Plus, he had had an off the field issue uh, going into it, the draft. Well, we got into an altercation with some guys we used to hang out with. And it really, it didn't involve me. And it was just kind of one of those unfortunate things that happened. I'm not worried about the 40 time because when quarterbacks start dropping back 40 yards, then maybe I'll worry about it. But at 10 yards, he's pretty damn fast. Carson Palmer, you know, the Heisman Trophy winner, he's pretty much gonna go number one overall, but we were kind of eyeing the Cardinals at six because they needed a pass rusher. We'll go anywhere in between one and six. I didn't think he was gonna get past two. When the Cardinals didn't draft me, I was highly disappointed. And I was also highly motivated, like once they traded out of the pick. Now our, it's a free for all. We were actually trying to move around and make a trade to get up and, and, and take the quarterback. Didn't happen, kind of fell apart late. And all of a sudden we're sitting there at 10 and we got to make a pick. And there sits Terrell. So we look, I've never seen a, a draft room more shocked than that one. Got this 410 call. I'm like, 410? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, hello? He was like, what's up, Scissors? It's Ozzie Newsome. Yo, we getting you next, you know, we 10. They've been like the, considered the greatest defense since the 85 Bears. But when Sizzle fell to us, I was like, we just created a real problem in Baltimore. Ray Lewis, Ed Reed, Peter Boulware, Tony Saragusa, you know what I mean? Adalis Thomas, Chris McAllister. Like, I, I went to this team that had all these defensive giants. And I was just like, God's really looking out for me. I remember being on flights. And, you know, the players, that's the time where the players had DVD players, little mini C players looking at different things. And you'd see Terrell, looking at Disney movies, you know? 
And he thought, boy, this kid's young. He was very wide-eyed, but he was also very receptive. When I got in that Ravens locker room, they made me a man. And most importantly, they made me a Raven. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody, like, everybody that walk in that locker room aren't Ravens. And we're going to sort them out. We're going we're gonna to find out who Ravens were, who we can depend on. He started to buy in, like, very quickly, right? And from that moment, I was like, wait a minute. This kid is just freaking dynamic. And when he started to plug himself in, the puzzle became really simple. It also helps to have the greatest linebacker and the greatest safety ever behind you. So you could pretty much play football without any consequences. He became the fire starter for our defense when it came to just wrecking people's game plans, offensive coordinators. He became a nightmare uh, very early, man. Coach Harbs, he was like, we need to get Sizzle to be Sizzle again. We needed each other at that point in our career. Coach Harbaugh had the insight to know that I knew what buttons to push with one of his best players. It's like, as soon as we got there, we got right back. When we were together at ASU, it was a young coach and a young player. And by the time we got together in, in Baltimore, it was two grown men you know, working as a team to, to be the best. In the latter part of his career, he had now transitioned because of the Ray Lewis's were gone and the Ed Reeds were gone. He took on that mantle. And that, that was rewarding to see uh, because I didn't know that Terrell sucks because it wasn't required of him, but now it was. Every year that young man matured, 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 matured. What he did mentally by the end of his career, I'm telling you, like a lot of guys do not buy into it like that, but he did. When you get drafted to a team, you don't think, oh, I'm gonna be their all time sack leader. To achieve something like that, it's humbling. Suggs cuts it back. Runs over one person, steps out of it. When we're talking about a guy who's put together, you know, in theory, a, a Hall of Fame, you know, NFL football career, we've had one guy do it. He helped me and the Hamilton Huskies on the road to success. And you can never thank him enough for that. When you say Terrell Suggs, honestly, the first thing I think of is a TV replay. It's just the vision of that number 48 coming off the right edge, demolishing the offensive lineman who was trying to block him, and then uh, reaching his destination, which was the quarterback. Randall McDaniel, Archuleta, you know, Pat Tillman, Jake Plummer, Danny White. We, when people think of Sundell, they, that's those guys they think of. I just hope, you know, Terrell Suggs would be one of those names. When I think of Terrell, I think his name should be on that stadium like the rest of the guys. We should really be embracing his legacy and be trying to, you know, build the college around what he did. He predominantly played on my backside, so I didn't get to see him as much, but I could feel him and I could hear him. And he was just, you know, he's a pain in the ass to play against because he was so disruptive. but. He was fun. I mean, he, he made the game fun. I liked talking trash back and forth. He'd always bring up the Pac-12 or SC. For me, the game was hard. And so I'm stressed out and I'm like, but for him, like the joy of playing the game, like you can see it in him. He's like the perfect football player. Trust me, getting drafted 10 is no easy feat, but he could have been drafted number one and should have been drafted number one, two or three. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, I wanted him number one because he'd have been in Cincinnati. <laughs> Obviously, there was great defensive linemen throughout the history of the game of football. Uh, I think I think Terrell changed what that looked like a little bit. He's a throwback player that could have played in the 50s, 60s, 80s. He could still be a dominant player today. Um, he really could fit in any system, any defense. He's, he's a defensive coordinator's dream. People ask me, do I miss football? I'm like, no. I don't. I miss the locker room. I'm glad like I was able to kind of leave on my terms. It was like my career ended right as my children are starting to come into their own. 55, 
I wouldn't have played as long as I played without having teammates like him. I hope that he's a first ballot Hall of Famer, you know, in the NFL, because, uh, man, he was good for a long time. I just want, hopefully, to be respected as, you know, one of the best football players to ever play. I wasn't perfect by any means, but, you know, I was, I was sizzle.